and gentlemen, please pray silence to the right way for the Lord Mayor of Liverpool, Councillor Christine Banks. To advise members that apologies for absence have been received from councillors Paul Brandt, Lawrence Brown, Joanne Calvert, Angela Coleman, Michelle Corrigan, Linny Hinnigan, Ros Gladden, James Noakes, Mary Rasmussen, Jeremy Wolfson, Alice Bennett, and Bill Jones. Are there any further apologies to report? My Lord, I just joined us to that very obvious Councillor Council of Kelly had agreed to the family this morning. He may get here, but it's a preemptive apology just in case. Uh, not not that close. <laughs> Where 
Council that there's three statements that have been received. First statement by Bishop Paul Bears, Bishop of Liverpool, in relation to item 9 on the agenda. Fixed universal credit.
We've been listening to our partners and taking evidence on the impact of welfare reforms generally and more specifically recently, the introduction rolling out of universal credit. I give warm credit to Martin Jungnitz and his colleagues on the staff of this council for the excellent work they did in the past on cumulative impact assessment of benefit cuts and for the excellent current work on the unintended consequences of universal credit. If this implementation rolls out in a few days' time, I confidently, sorrowfully, and angrily expect that there will be greater hardship in our city. Of course, the churches will do what they can to alleviate that hardship. But the Archbishop and I said in our letter that Christians are increasingly nauseated by growing talk in the nation of the undeserving poor and by social policies that treat human beings and human flourishing as if they were debit lines on a balance sheet. It is no longer tolerable to see people who I believe were made in the image of God living in increasing despair. So friends, I strongly support the terms of the motion you'll look at later. That universal credit must be paused, reviewed and fixed now, not later. I stand together with many other faith communities for that justice. Thank you very much.
looks showing that the fifth group of UK parents struggles to afford sanitary protection for their daughters and more than 135,000 girls missed out on school each year because of period poverty. We request that the council work with local businesses to eliminate the application of VAT to 0% VAT and to find an alternative way to reduce the cost on all such products on sale in Liverpool. We feel that this, as a city, is something that we should take the lead on with a view to taking it nationally and to shame central government to remove this abhorrent tax you pay by on such products. Let's take the stance, be the pioneers and end pay poverty in Liverpool. Thank you again for granting me this audience. from the Liverpool Sisters Group.
put out what I believe to be offensive stickers. They then accused us in this council of not listening, and yet they've just addressed this council. And they have accused us of being afraid of having a debate or a discussion. Well, that's what happened. And the issue for me and for everybody in this chamber is that the Gender Recognition Act, or what's happening with central government, is happening with central government. This council or this chamber have united against uh, the behaviour of the resistance in defacing public art, in what I believe to be, and I'm proud to state, that was done in a hateful way, and it resulted not only in transgender um, groups, individuals, including me, Councillor Doyle and others, being subjected to torrents of abuse because of what was done. That isn't about equality, that isn't about fairness, that isn't about having an open uh, de debate, that's about bullying, and it's about intimidation, and it's about proposing hate against people that are different. That's something that every single one of us in this council reject, and that's why you never got any applause. If you'd approached in a different way, and you wanted to have a sensible conversation and discussion with us, then we'd listen. But we won't tolerate abuse of members of this community that we respect, value and love. And when you get that in your head, then I'll sit down and meet with you and discuss with you your concerns. Until then, I will be with you.
Okay, just, just uh, this is a uh, presentation just from uh, the inclusive growth uh, that is the agenda of uh, me. This looks like it's going to be one of those, um, what would you call the panelists that normally call it one. So I'll sit that one on as well and see if it mixes up. I'll, I'll try it. Um, so it's basically just an update on some of the things that are going on, some of the things that are happening. Um, and also, as I said around the, the inclusive growth, now we've got a motion on the inclusive growth and I just want to touch on that a little bit about what, uh, I hope everybody's received and seen and read the inclusive growth strategy. Um, so basically I'll come to a little bit more in detail about what it means, but the inclusive growth, it's important that we recognise the challenges uh, ahead of us, but also what's gone on in the past, because what I need to uh, constantly remind people <coughs> is that the funding cuts that we've had uh, and the problems that we face are not a blip. They're actually continuing and they're going to continue. Um, so, you know, again, just very, very quickly, um, this is the council's uh, situation, and I'll, I'll talk about the universal credit situation in a minute now that impacts because it's important that people understand the link to that. But you know we have uh, an 11 million pound um, debt to pay every year based on uh, what we inherited in 2010 in terms of debt, the unpaid bills, uh, all of those things and of course the loss of the fund. But basically I want to tell you about the debt that we face in terms of that 11 million pound which I told you, I think, at the uh, ATM. So, um, of course, this is the ninth year that we, we've faced uh, cuts. We've still got 40 million to go. If you remember when we set the budget, we set the budget over a, a three-year period. We've actually um, more or less done uh, a year and a half. Uh, we've still got 40 million to go. We've made savings and they're ongoing. Um, and I'll, I'll come back to you uh, in a second, again, uh, about where we are with the universal credit. And again, I know there's a debate around that. I'm, I'm just going to give you some uh, views on, on that. But um, let's remember that central point about the council tax of where we are. And when I talk about it not being a blip, I remind people of the £38 million pound that Bristol get more in council tax than we do, simply because they've got higher council tax bands and 70% of ours is the lower. So it's some of the things that we've done, and it will shoot much more, I think, um, about some of the things that, that we do. Somebody said to me the other day, uh, one of our trade union colleagues, that they know that there's no other city that's doing more to help people than, than we are. And that's why, you know, we, when we say the services that we provide to homeless people uh, and, and to others and all of the stuff that we do, and again, it's, it's evidenced in an uh, effort. Pay tribute to Jane, to Jane Corbett, and also to Martin, and Martin, who we installed the team. It's evidence that they actually do do to support people. So, uh, and it's an excellent read, an excellent document, and it's one that we will make sure everybody uh, gets to see. Um, but if you look at, there's a, there's a mixture of this in terms of um, our, our achievements. But I just want to, this is a, a little bit of a, a slide just on uh, regeneration, because it's important to know. Uh, how we are, if you like, using the invest to earn, because that's the point about it not being, you know, if this is not a blip, it's about how we deal with uh, growing the economy and creating new revenue to actually uh, move us forward. So festival gardens, um, in January, there'll be a uh, work start uh, in January that deeply contaminates some of uh, the site, um, and then we look forward to uh, building houses uh, on that and other regeneration stuff and of course part of the housing will be uh, to support foundations moving forward uh, but we were criticised for taking over uh, Festival Park um, but, but we will uh, use it and make it work for us as an important component. And some of the things are, uh, around Palm a lot of criticism of the council around Pixton Gardens or, uh, as it's called you'll see just in that vision of what we'll end up creating in Palmer is more space, more green space than what is currently 
uh, available there. We're on going with that again. It's an important part of uh, the city moving forward in terms of uh, regeneration. Uh, then the cruise line terminal um, uh, in January again we demolished the jetty and work starts on the cruise line terminal and a new hotel that's going next to that. Importantly, we've just uh, completed uh, our negotiations and discussions with the Isle of Man, um, the Isle of Man government, and they are building a new terminal for the Isle of Man ferries as well, which links into a new road that will link it in from Leeds Street into uh, the uh, waterfront that links up the Isle of Man terminal with the, the dock road that now on to Leeds Street to make better. Uh, to make better connectivity. That again uh, is underway, that's start uh, that way, uh, which links the water from. There's two uh, aspects of that. One is the one that's already uh, underway, and there's going to be one a little bit later on, further down Lord Liverpool, in Lord Liverpool. So, um, I say we, we're, we're excited about foundations, and, and we keep talking about, uh, about it, and I think it's going to be a really great opportunity for us. We'll be producing uh, a brochure within the next few weeks that we'll be able to uh, give to people. We'll show the different opportunities, the different tenders of housing that will be available to people. Uh, that is creating, if you like, a tilt in the housing ladder, which is against people uh, to tip it that way. So you know, people uh, get on the housing ladder. But I think it's been something that uh, the city can be proud of when we've got it up and running. We're already uh, started on site uh, on a number of, uh, of sites with many uh, many more to come. So that's something that we'll be sharing with you. The sites, but also the different models and the different opportunities uh, for people moving forward. Paddington Village. This is half a million pounds uh, worth of development. Um, you know, with a couple of thousand jobs. This is the spine. This is the Royal College of Physicians. Uh, building uh, 250 pounds worth of development going on there. Next to that is a new four-star hotel. Um, we've just also uh, got a number of other pe people signed up on there. Kaplan, uh, a language school, uh, Proton uh, Therapy um, moving into there on, on that particular site. There's some more visuals of, of some of the things that are going on. King's Dog in the car park. That is uh, happening really soon. We'll wait until after the Labour conference. Come on, upset Jenny. We're actually doing that, so we'll be told that when the conference ends, we we'll start to work on on that. And it is to build a, a bigger um, a, a bigger car park than what's current, currently there. Uh, so that's happening. And then this is just then uh, coming back on to uh, some of the problems that we face, some of the challenges that we face, and it links in uh, to universal credits. If you look at it in terms of, you know, average English cost, uh, in terms of austerity, the other twenty uh, pound, um, you know, that's what uh, that's that's what what is the average across the country? But in Liverpool, it's seven hundred and twelve. Um, you know all those things there about uh, how uh, one in three children uh, are living in poverty, all the other things, all of the problems that, that we face, and this is how we spend. Uh, our money, and this is coming back to uh, universal credit because it's absolutely uh, an appalling situation that we find ourselves in. And I do urge you to read this 5,000 people have been uh, on a pilot study, on a pilot scheme uh, in North Liverpool. 5,000. And as a result of that 5,000, we've spent around about 2.7 million helping those people in North Liverpool. People who've been sanctioned, people who've been punished, people who've been waiting for benefits for over 12 weeks, 13 weeks, 14 weeks in some cases. We've actually been waiting and as a result of that, we've been giving them support, 90 pounds a week to stop them being evicted. We've been giving them support through our citizen support scheme, our discretionary housing fund, all of those things are there what you see, what we do. And that's the point. Despite the challenges that we face and despite the severe problems that we face, there is no other city that is doing more than us. In fact, one of the local government journals rang us to point out uh, the fact that there is no other city 
in the country, no other city in the country doing more than what we're doing uh, to help people in the way that we do. The welfare reforms and, and um, how it has impacted on people. Again, it's in this document, there's some really good case studies there. But let me just tell you, linking into uh, the challenges that we face, because there's going to be 45,000 people uh, who are going to transfer to universal credit. 45,000. And that means that that Liverpool is going to have to step up to the plate and help people. Well, let me tell you what it actually already means for us, the challenges that we face in terms of the benefits system and how it currently operates. I'm sorry if this is important, I don't know whether anybody is back there. But at this current moment, Liverpool is old. £35 million pound in council tax. That's what we're owed. £35 million pound in council tax. £24.7 million, just under £25 million pound in council tax, is owned by people who are in receipt of housing benefits. Just under £25 million pounds is owed to us, but it's owed to us by people who are in receipt of benefits. So how can we then take people to court, paying bailiffs? It's just not something that not only will we not do, but we can't do. It's a model, it's wrong, and so again, not only we are one of the poorest cities in the country in terms of the fact that we've got less money coming in and we've got a higher demand, we're also now faced with a situation where we've got huge chunks of money owed to us by people who can't pay. And that's a fact of life and that's why it's important that this message about universal credit is told because the unintentional consequences of universal credit is more and more kids living in poverty, more and more people dependent on us for help, more and more people asking us for help, begging us for help. And if we don't help them, then the reality is, is that most of them can be evicted and then it picks up the pieces it's Liverpool City Council, again, that has to pick up the pieces. We have to win this argument, and that's why I'm absolutely delighted, absolutely delighted, that Bishop Paul, Archbishop Malcolm, are all supporting our call for a pause. Because unless you understand the unintended consequences, Unless you understand that it's going to add more pain, more hate, and more pressure on us as a city. <laughs> if you don't understand that, then you fail to recognise what you claim is the benefits of moving to universality. It's just not working. It is just not happening. And the very fact that we've got that evidence from the trial, the 5,000, that we've piloted. This isn't some rhetoric political posture. This is evidence based. What Jane Corbett's produced and what Martin's produced and what is in this document is evidence based. It's based on the pilot study, it's based on the facts. So it is not something that's looking out the air. The testimonies and the facts and the case studies are actual. And they need to be recognised as such. And if we can, I think, take this message, not only ourselves as a council, but with others and other councils, but with the trade unions, with, our, with the Labour Party, with other political parties too, if we make that case, and we make that case powerfully and strongly based on that evidence, 
then we might be able to get a pause. And that's why I urge uh, Richard Kemp and, and others to actually make sure that they too are right behind this campaign to pause universal credit because it is damaging and it is damaging uh, to the people of this city. And so it was <coughs> to actually make uh, that, if you like, revelation because it's important that we understand it. Because as we're trying to fight to make the savings through the cuts that are getting implemented to us by central government, perversely we are also then struggling because of the benefits that this government is introducing universal credit means that we can't get the money in to pay for other services because people simply can't afford to pay. And we are not going to go and attach uh, Aidan's uh, statements to uh, people who are on benefits and take £3.70 up to their benefits every week. And then what happens is when they go to court, it's in a stack up system. It's in a stack up system that means that our demand, if you like, is down the system and there will be other people ahead of us. So we're not going to add to the burden of people by giving a hundred pound bill because we bring in the bailiffs to something that they can't pay anyway. So it just simply is, is not going to happen. So that is, you know, all of those there that we can make these available to you. 40,000 are behind in council tax payments. Um, Liverpool in terms of the court costs or whatever, the lowest it can possibly be. We don't uh, send in bailiffs, we do not refer debts to bailiffs like others do. And as I said, that, that report itself talks about um, the new claims nationally, where we are, the number of people, 55,000 people. All of these will be uh, sent to you these, this presentation so you can see it yourself. So coming back to, and I just briefly talked uh, about the inclusive growth plan and our transformational plan and how they link. And it is quite simply this, that if we want to accept the fact that what we face, them, the challenge that we face is not a blip, then we have to do something differently. We have to uh, look at what we spend, where we spend it, how we spend it, and how we can get a better bang for our book. And that's where the big conversation, our conversation, uh, with the community through you as councillors comes in, how we can look at, how we can maximise all the funds and all the money that we spend in a particular locality, how we work with the RSLs, how we work with the policy sector, how we work uh, with other people who make contributions in our community, how we can unite, how we can support each other. Because believe you me, one thing that is absolutely clear, absolutely clear, is that universal credit and the rollout of universal credit and what is happening with this country in terms of Brexit, people are going to be more and more reliant on us going forward and we simply have not got the resources.